to one. Now uh, we, we we should have a good quality um, a recording. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, like I was telling you before, you ever experience like um, you have an emotion of anger, but you don't really associate with it with them or not. It's almost like uh, it's almost like this, man. Like like we're all always channeling energy to some extent, right? It's almost like I felt like the energy, uh, which we all are, but the energy was offended to some extent. That's kind of like how I felt in an instant because I, the times we've had explanations for it, I don't care. It, it's like, it's, it's fine. You get what I'm saying? But when there's no explanations to it, I take those and I, I, I'm like really, uh, I'm woken up by those. You get what I'm saying? That's the reason why I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on, bro? You know? Yeah. Well, like I say, it was doubtless error on, on my end, but it still isn't clear now whether I'm actually doing the right thing. Um, and, and so I'll just have to see if this is a success and I know what settings it's on now that, um, right. on the next time as well. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Ziggy, uh, doubtless that you are aware. Yeah. I uh, saw a couple, I haven't had a chance to watch YouTube as much because I've been busy with school, but I saw you posted some videos about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you've been posting a lot of videos about it. I just haven't had a chance to uh, to check it out. You want to talk a little bit about that real quick just to kind of get that word out uh, yeah. for the viewers? Uh, well, I mean, uh, this is my Opus Magnum. Uh, it, it's uh, a collection of uh, all of my uh, spiritual journey over 14 years. It took me nine months every single day to write. It's uh, 670 pages. It's um, philosophical, psychological, spiritual, metaphysical, religious, um, spiritual, uh, po political. It, it, it's everything in here. And um, I speak about... Well, now that I know, I'm actually going to go and... and uh... I can't wait to look at it. I'm going to actually get my copy and I'll let you know when I get it. Definitely yeah, want to check it interesting out. interesting because um, I, I'm actually um, almost exactly halfway through reading it myself. And ah. uh, I, How do you feel oh, reading your own it, material? It reads superb. It really does read superb. Um, you know, I'm a pedantic sort of person and I don't like errors. And so uh, I, I'm very Jordan Peterson in that respect. I went over. Oh, that's why I got easy. That's why I, I'm kind of offended about the whole first video thing in a way. Not me personally, but just I feel like an emotion about it. But I'm observing the emotion. I'm not really associating with it. But yeah, I guess we're a lot of like that. Right? Three hour talk, which we yeah. had last week. We lost that. Yeah technical difficulties yeah. and it was um you know our conversations to get better and better uh, and that one covered yeah. a lot of stuff and it was great but hopefully we um um you know are going to be able to uh, post these now and what i want to do is um i want to take a, a pit stop a uh, tea break for five minutes or two minutes or something uh, so we can start the video again because um otherwise i've got you know two or three hours you know our conversations invariably are three hours nobody's going to be attempting those videos and so i want to try to right. um, you know reduce the, uh, the volume of them make them more feasible for people and uh, then one of my viewers very kindly he um uh, lists uh, the times uh, the timestamps and the conversations and so that's great so people can look at it and see if they're interested you know uh see all this is yeah. good, but I, I don't have the energy or the technical know-how um or indeed the inclination to do all that stuff it's not my business you know i just do it um you know because i like doing it uh, i i don't intend to get my videos out there to millions and you know have them all thoroughly i don't care uh, and so, uh, but if somebody else does it uh, and it helps other people, then fine. Um, but yeah, this, 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 this uh, you know, it says closer to God, but um, uh, it, it, it's the God of the cosmos. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's the, the people's God. It's everybody's God. It's not any particular God. I'm not getting involved in that. In actual fact, I, you know, have a lot to say uh, about the, the, the Christian God and the Christian faith in here, um, you know, with its haughty, uh, demanding, commanding um, separatism that, that, you know, it's had going on for all these years. Um, you know, and, and, and why, you know, I wear um, the inverted cross. 
Uh, it's not because I'm anti-Christ. I'm not. Uh, I'm fully in allegiance with uh, Christ uh, as a human being, not as a God, as a human being, and all what he stood for. Uh, I'm anti-Christian because they're closed-minded bigots and, and, and they're full of biases and dogma and uh, propaganda and hypnosis and they they can't hold a, an intelligent conversation uh, it's just parrot fashion what it says in the bible and you know the indoctrination that that religion has on people it's disgusting and it's vile uh, because it doesn't leave people um to deal with their own intelligence their own mind and their own experience it doesn't, you know, convey, you know, what do you think? You know, it's up to you. No, this is it. Jesus was the son of God and then he was God and then he was the son and then he was the father. And when he was crucified on the cross, he was crying out, Father, why did you forsake me? So that doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense um, for a rational thinking mind. And this is why um, uh, real intelligent people uh, just cannot uh, have any allegiance with any particular religion. Uh, and, and when you come upon people who seemingly are intelligent, like uh, there's some dude called uh, Rupert Sheldrake, he's British, and uh, he wrote one of these books that I've just read about morphic resonance. And that's a great theory, and it's very intelligent. And, and he is, in actual fact, uh, a scientist. He's got a PhD um, in some form of biology, I think. Um, uh, evolutionary biology is something like that and yet he, he he's a christian and you know he believes that christ was the son of god i'm like well where does it all fall down where does it go you know drastically wrong because anybody that reads the bible looks at that and tries to make head or tail out of it or any reason out of it they just see it's a contradictory heinous hateful piece of crap uh, and so you know um, enough said on that because um, you know if anything vexes me it is it's that and it's not uh, the religion that vexes me it's the stupidity and the arrogance of Christians uh, who uh, uh, don't have any mind to give any other philosophy ideology or religion uh, the slightest opportunity um, to be in allegiance or, or alongside them and I just say to myself well you know what's two and a half billion Chinese uh, got to say about it what's like several billion uh, indonesians got to say about it you know the vast majority of these you know up until 100 years ago probably wouldn't have even heard of jesus and yet there were their gods were vastly older than jesus what have they got to say about your stupid garden of eden you know which has been stole from you know all the ancient mythology and it can be proven it's a complete plagiarized book uh, and yet you know the, the christians they want to kill you they get all vexed and very angry and if i'm ever gonna have any problem about anything i say on my video it's with christians so i just throw them in the snake pit where they belong and that means yep. I delete them on the channel so so the upside down cross to you uh is um is you representing that symbol as anti-christian in yeah, particular, or does it mean anti, something else anti, to you? Anti-dogma. That's basically what it is, because all the Christians are dogmatic. I've never met one with an open mind. Uh, I, I uh, Even if uh, I've spoken to them when they are otherwise intelligent, when I question them about their uh, belief and faith, uh, that's all it comes down to. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just like, oh, I know, I know. And I'm like, well, how do you know? Um, well, just, just a feeling. And I'll tell you, look, you know, I can tell you that, you know, I know that there is an astral plane because I've been there. I can tell you that the, there is an egregore called Jesus because he visited me one day. I can tell you that there's an egregore or some sort of energy form that spoke to me um, as if from the clouds on uh, a three and a half gram or four and a half gram of mushrooms because it happened for three hours. Um, just as I'm speaking to you now, I knew that happened. I don't know what actually was happening, but uh, intuitively I knew it was Jehovah. And then with the Jesus thing, intuitively I knew it was Jesus. So I do know that these things, these energies, these egregores are about. So then I look into a rational application of how they manifest. And then when we read about egregores and we read about uh, all different sorts of uh, spiritual manifestations, we can go, oh, okay, yeah, 
I mean, clearly there is a spiritual world uh, in a, another dimension of our consciousness where, you know, I've had angels visit me. And like I say, I've been to hell, and uh, you know, for, for uh, 18 hours and um, all these sort of things. Uh, an open mind is what we need. And if anybody says, oh, I know there is uh, Jesus and God, fine. OK, but just don't be pushing out on other people and but don't be dismissing other people's religion as if they're stupid. And, you know, your God's the only God. It's like when I was at school, you know, my dad's harder than your dad. It's exactly that nonsense. And what we find is when we look at uh, religion, particularly Islam and Christianity, is that it's very childish. And, um, you know, th th they've missed one thing. They've missed one very, very important tenet of that religion, and that's to become like children. And that means uh, to be innocent and unassuming, because if you're innocent and unassuming, uh, then your consciousness will uh, see all. But when you become bigoted and self-opinionated and indoctrinated, then your mind is closed down uh, to rational thinking uh, and anybody else's opinion. That's why I wear the inverted cross. Uh, that's why I uh, have... Um, um, what can I say? Uh, uh, I, just, I just do the face uh, against Christians because um, I could never get any sense out of them. Uh, Ziggy. Aaron, what's the what's your what's your definition of innocence then? Because you said that uh, like children, because of their innocence, what is the definition of innocence? Yeah, well, I mean, um... and by the way, when I read your book, I'm gonna go in that. Yeah, I asked these questions ahead of time, but um, I'm gonna go in there basically as if I know nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's how I like to read the book. You know, yeah. this way, uh, I can see. And but uh, but these questions obviously arise just uh. As a preface, before I go and read the book, I want to have a uh, understanding as where your psychology is toward these particular words you're using. So I, I yeah. hope you don't mind well, that I'm asking you. You know, questions. we can do a whole series. And uh, this book, uh, if uh, the average reader reads 300 words um, uh, over three minutes, let's say 100 words a minute, then, uh, then it's, it's 33 hours of, of reading. So it, it's a lengthy book, you know, and uh, so yeah. um, however long it takes you to read it, the, the best thing is to do is to, you know, chapter by chapter, make your notes on each chapter, and then we can have conversations about the, the notes in the chapter because oh, absolutely, uh, it, it gets very, very deep, very esoteric, and um, philosophical and psychological. And, um, you know, I'm questioning and dismantling uh, all of these facets of, of, of the spiritual realm because I want to know what has actually happened to me. I want to try to work out where do does the mind go? Does our consciousness go when we enter into the so-called astral world? Is it a real world? Is it a real plane? Uh, or is it all in our minds? Uh, but it seems like it's out there because when you leave the body, uh, you, your vision goes with you and your senses go with you. And yet everything changes. And, you know, you meet all different sorts of people and creatures. So it seems like it's another world. It really is bizarre. Yeah. But getting back to the question, the innocence, um, well, this, you know, Jesus says, you know, truly I say unto you that unless you become like little children, um, you know, you, you, you will never get into the kingdom of God because it, it's the innocent, uh, open, completely open, unadulterated way of looking at the world, which is the kingdom of God, because you're not judging, you've not got no biases, you've not got any pollution or anything in your mind, you are observing God's creation in its purity. And that is uh, perfection. That is the kingdom of God. Uh, without knowing what anything is, we don't know that it's a blackbird, that it's a sparrow, that, that it's a robin, that it's a um, you know, beaver, or any of these things. Because as soon as we label something, then what we do is we archive that little bit of information and then we think we know all about that. Oh, that's just a beaver. And then we never, ever look any closer again. We should never label anything. And what I always say to people is like, if you go into a woods or out into a natural environment and you do an open eye meditation, uh, if you are pro pro proficient meditator, then you can clear your mind of all thoughts. And when you look at things, um, you don't have any thoughts in mind, so you don't label anything. And it's as if you're looking at this world like an alien or from a child's perspective. 
and you see so much more than you ever would uh, being uh, a mature, uh, indoctrinated, poisoned human being. What is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven, Lord, God. How would, you, um, how, would, how would you know you're in the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God? Well, how I describe um, being in uh, these places um, is that, if, first and foremost, what I've done in the book, I, I've uh, said to myself, look, if we're going to be having an allegiance with any of these uh, uh, religions, if we're going to be um, entering into debates about them, then we have to know fundamentally what all of these concepts mean. So we have to know what God means. We have to know what devil means. We have to know what heaven and hell means. We have to know what the kingdom of God means. Uh, we, we have to look at all these things and we have to dismantle them and, uh, you know, uh, break them down to, to their, you know, absolute bare essentials and see what there is there and ask ourselves, where did these um, uh, metaphors uh, come from? And so I don't um, read the Bible. Bible, um, from the perspective of it was written by God, because if it was written by God, is a very stupid asshole. You know, to be fair, murdering, lying, cheating, deceiving, jealous, heinous, and all these things. And um, you know, for, for, for one of the first things is if people say, "Oh, God doesn't lie," Jehovah doesn't lie. Well, okay. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, God said to Adam and Eve, "If you eat from that forbidden uh, tree, you will surely die." Well, they didn't die. And then, you know, the Christians get around it. Oh, well, that was just a metaphor. And that's, it just, it just goes on and on and on. A anything they don't agree with, or it just sounds so preposterous, it, it always means this, it always means that. And what I say is, well, why wasn't God clear? <laughs> you know, in view of what, what his children are like, uh, questioning, inquiring, because we've got intelligent minds, why wasn't he clear with any of this stuff? You would have thought God could have made the Bible absolutely clear, uh, so it wasn't contestable. But no, it, it wasn't. And, and, and so, you know, it just falls down. Uh, and, and this yeah. is the thing. So I despised ignorance. Um, I think that that's it. Uh, but I am very forgiving for ignorance. It, it, as long as it doesn't come with, uh, with an ego that considers it knows everything. Uh, because that there's nothing worse than that. There's nothing more abhorrent than, you know, an ignorant, stupid person, uh, clearly indoctrinated, that think they know um, more than yeah. others. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, in, intellectuals have always said, the worst uh, human being on the planet is, is the stupid ones that think they are clever. Because when they are stupid, with a little bit of information, they think they know a whole lot more than they do. But the wise saying is, the more we learn, the more we realize how little we know. So the, the, the wiser we become, the more well-read and educated and traveled we become, the more we realize that we don't know in actual fact anything to be sure. You know, and that's the prerogative of the wise man. So I don't know if I missed it, but you said, how would you realize you're in the kingdom of heaven? Okay, so the kingdom of heaven, um, uh, first and foremost, I have to go, well, what is the kingdom of heaven? And um, if we look for a description of heaven in the Bible, then there's about one paragraph. And, you know, it mentions stuff about, um, you know, there's this sort of like um, a yellow, uh, um, transparentish sort of uh, cube, uh, which is heaven. And inside, you know, the, the rivers are running with um, gold and everything's bejeweled. And it's kind of like, well, it doesn't really say anything. It sounds a little bit like a DMT trip, if you ask me. Um, you know, if that's heaven, I'm not sure I want to go there. It sounds pretty boring, to be fair. And, and I don't care what what's hanging from the trees, jewels and everything. I think this place is much better um, because this place I find absolutely fascinating and enthralling. So you can keep your fucking jewels and you, you, your rivers flowing with gold or whatever it fucking is. I'll, I'll have rivers flowing with water. Thank you very much. Glistening and shining and sparkling and inspiring, you know, actual running life it is. And so it doesn't do anything for me. And it's just nonsense. This is heaven. This earth is heaven. But how we have to get into heaven is we have to get into the best possible version of human consciousness. Now, for those that wrote um, these books in the Bible, I do believe that many of them had good intentions. 
um, to uh, impart uh, their wisdom, what they discerned about uh, human psychology. Because I believe that the, the, the Bible and all religious books, particularly like the Bhagavad Gita, um, they're all the first attempts at human um, cognitive behavioral therapy to impart to stupid people uh, how to act. Uh, and give longevity and peace uh, to their clans and, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, telling them that, you know, don't be coverting your neighbor's ox and don't be lying and don't be doing this and don't be stealing. You know, it's all elementary, you know, isn't it? The Ten Commandments. And uh, so it, it was the first attempt at cognitive behavioral therapy. And so they were thinking like, um, well, I mean, uh, you see, if you're going to, if you're going to invent something, if you're going to say that there's somewhere better to go, then you have to have had an experience of somewhere better uh, to build a fantasy on. You know, because you could say, look, in your absolute best um, memory of how you felt wonderful and beautiful. If you reflect back on that, uh, you, you, we could say that that's heaven for you. Because if you was to live like that every day, then you wouldn't want for any more because, you know, you're a human being, you're in a human world and you're ecstatic. And so it's like being on DMT or like being in love. You know, in the early stages, if the world was like that, then that's my idea of the heaven. It's an experience that the human being can have, which is ecstatic, beautiful, free of pain and suffering. What could be over and above that? If any Christians want to go, oh, that's not nothing to do with heaven. You know, God is something in God. You know. Well, tell me what you, what you experience there. Because for the few lines from that stupid fucking book, um, then, you know, that doesn't tell me anything what it's like, you know. Uh, where, you know, the lion lays down with the lamb and, you know, we, we can have that here. You know, there's loads of scenarios where you've got human interaction with tigers and lions and this, that and the other. Uh, you know, it depends how they've been trained and introduced and developed. And, and if they don't feel threatened, we can all live like that. You know, we can create that stuff here. And so my idea of heaven is when we uh, diminish the ego, when we diminish the ego, we are pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is God consciousness. It's cosmic consciousness. There's so many people that have spoken about this. And of course, um, Hindus and Buddhists and all the rest of it, spiritual people and uh, anybody that's had any real human experience in relation to psychedelics or supernatural, they will tell you that when they en exit their ego, then they enter into a different paradigm. And I've had many scenarios when I've been completely compassmentous and my ego has just left my mind and I'm standing uh, like in a DMT world where the world is absolutely beautiful and I can feel the love and I know it's all for me. You know, uh, it could be for everybody else as well, but I'm not feeling it for everybody else unless I am everybody else, you see. But I'm feeling that the world and the cosmos is for me and I feel special. And so that is a wonderful feeling and that's heaven in my mind. And I'm telling people in my book, that you can experience that here on earth because I have many, many times and I can experience it every single time when I take DMT, dimethyltryptamine. When you take dimethyltryptamine, uh, when you take enough of it, uh, you, you step outside of the ego or you diminish the ego, you end up in pure consciousness, which is, is unadulterated. And that is the purity of God. That is when we become like little children. You see, so that's what the metaphor was when Jesus says that. Because, you know, I've looked at all this stuff and I'm like, how do we come become like little children to start pissing and shitting herself and throwing up on a mama's titty? You know, how do we come, become like little children? How do we lose our, our rational thinking? You, you know, this was a problem for me, um, Ziggy, uh, for many years until the first day I took DMT. And then when I took DMT, I knew exactly what Jesus meant. Because it wasn't possible for me until I had uh -huh. to and it killed the ego. Uh -huh. Then I was like a little child. And I, I was, I, I'm like this. I, I, I'm absolutely aghast at the world. It's beautiful. It's glistening. It's gleaming. It's like some Alice in Wonderland fairy tale. It's beautiful. I feel beautiful. I felt 10 years younger. I'm skipping. I'm slapping my legs like a child. You know, I'm absolutely thrilled with being alive on this earth god's creation and yeah. so i know what god is i know what heaven is and that's why i get annoyed with these 
pop quiz that, that you know, tried to tell me <laughs> on my channel. <laughs> so let me ask you, Aaron, because you're not going to play devil's advocate too, but um, if you've seen, like, crackheads, how they feel so powerful, they feel like they can take bullets. You ever watch Scarface, like he was getting shot? And yeah. he was like, ah! And he's taking these bullets, but it's because of the effect of drugs. <laughs> Do you think that you reach these godlike, uh, what you would call consciousness, because of some chemical reaction to drugs you took, and you're confusing that for actual god mode to some extent? Or do you think that this may have been a chemical reaction from the drugs, no different than a crackhead, just feeling way more powerful? And some people feel like they can fly and they'll jump off a building. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, what do you think that they may have been a chemical reaction to the drug that makes you feel like this? And it's not really uh, what your ideas of Christ consciousness is. Well, um, you know all about these drugs and, uh, you know, um, chemicals in your body and things like that and the raising up of the Christos. So uh, if somebody has uh, a Kundalini rising, uh, then the Christos uh, is deemed uh, to raise up from um, the, the coccyx region, you know, where the serpent is curled up in, in, in the lower chakra. And then it goes, pow, through the top of your head, out into um, the consciousness uh, from whence it came, you know. So is that not a chemical reaction? Um, yeah, yeah, it is. But... Uh... It's more or less like you'll come back because uh, there's different ways to look at it. Let's say if you took the drugs, there's some people who may take the drugs but come back. And in, I'm not saying this is you, but in some people I've watched that they've become, they've came back evolved humans or they became uh, a more evolved way of expressing themselves in like an egotistical way. You get what I'm saying? Versus a person who may have done these drugs, but it, they, they may become so... Uh, enlightened by them that they don't even feel like they have to speak about it publicly in any kind of way you know what i'm saying it's not something that they want to push that's why my next question was going to be do you consider any of your philosophies and ideas to be dogmatic in any way or do you feel like none of your ideas and philosophies are dogmatic in any way well let me just address the first question then um which um what was the first question so the first question was, is I, my perspective on it is if you have these reactions naturally, like yeah. uh, some people may not feel like they need to express it publicly, but then there's others who do. And that can be an effect of the ego wanting to talk about something that it experienced as an ego, as an effect of the ego wanting to share things with other people yeah. when in actuality is something that can be kept secret. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why some things are called knowledge and secretion came from the word secret. You get what I'm trying to say? So, uh, yeah. yeah, but then uh, that led to the second question I just asked you. Yeah, so, um, th of course, we're human beings and we're multifaceted and throughout m millennia, throughout um, our, you know, history, uh, we've had all different sorts of people uh, saying different things. Now, if some people w w would think that a real enlightened person is just, you know, a super quiet guru that uh, doesn't feel it necessary to say anything because he's just enlightened and he's just bliss mm -hmm. and he wraps himself up in a sheet and that's it for the rest of his life. Well, uh, if we then say, well, how do you know about that? Well, because, you know, we've got Sadhguru and we've got Muji and then, you know, we've got all these other people. Well, they're speaking about it, aren't they? You know, they're coming out and they're telling everybody, you know, what enlightenment is and, you know, um, showing that they're enlightened. So aren't they doing what I'm doing? And, you know, because I'm more animated and I'm, I'm often quite brash uh, and, and, I, and I can cut people down in an instant. Uh, or you can't be enlightened if you speak to people. No, you can. And I've listened to the greatest of enlightened people cut people down in, a, in, in, in an instant. And so that's bollocks. People have... Um, the, the wrong perception of enlightenment because they've got no idea what it was uh, or what it is. Enlightenment is when you have been enlightened to your uh, actual core um, essence. Your core essence is pure consciousness, cosmic consciousness. And once you know that and you are not the human being and you are having uh, a human experience via your God consciousness, that's enlightenment. Period. End of story. And that's what every single guru on the planet has always said. So I know I've had that. So sorry, but disbelievers, I, I'm enlightened. You know, whether you like this image of enlightenment or not, you know, it's here and it's in here. 
uh, 700 fucking pages. It is page after page after page of uh, how to attain enlightenment and what it feels like, looks like, and, and all the rest of it. And um, then, you know, if, if we look at uh, different ways of, of delivering stuff, um, you know, if I came out of the East, then I would probably be a more humble person. Uh, if I um, was brought up, um, let's say, in, in uh, Japan or even China, uh, th th those nations are more humble, aren't they? They're very respecting to their parents and other people. Well, we're different here. I'm a product of the Western world. I'm a product of a self-made man that's dragged myself up um, by my fucking bootstraps. And I, I, I've travelled around this world the vast majority of time on my own, and I've experienced it, I've seen it, I've felt it, I've touched it, and, you know, I've gleaned the essence of it. Uh, and so I am what I am. And I'm in a perfect position to tell other people because I've fucking done it. I've been there. I've seen yeah. I am it. And whether anybody likes that or not, of course not. My viewers, um, the ones that stick around, they love the fact that uh, I'm like I am. Uh, and maybe they wish they were more like I am. If people come on my channel and they expect enlightenment to be love and light, uh, then they'll hang around for about 30 seconds because I'm not meeting their projection of what their fantasy is. But if they listen to what I say, then invariably people can't refute what I say, uh, Ziggy. You know, you make your own assessment, but I know um, lots of what I say you have an adherence to because it's sensible, it's correct. And as far as logic and reasoning goes, it's fucking you know on a level plane and, and, and so oh, don't get me wrong i've just me I, I you know i already told you i, I got to dissect mentality but um not discrediting your information at all don't ever think i'm doing that i just have to uh oh, i love it you know, again i, love I just it. like no, to no. ask all these questions no. and in actuality that's why i told you i invited you to make sure that if you ever hear me say something and you need to question me on what i'm saying please feel free to do so i mean i'm more than yeah. happy for you to do so actually yeah and, and, um uh, I, I'm open, I'm no. dogmatic, and, and, and you, I love these conversations because you're the only person um, that can do this, that can have this sort of conversation with me because it's a rare mind that can get involved in this sort of level. Right. And, um, you know, some people consider that elitist. Well, that's just how it is. You know, some people, you know, um, discover, you know, the, the, the nature of the cosmos in, in, you know, quantum physics or whatever, and other people write fantastic concerts whatever you know we, we are good thinking orators and um you know we, we put stuff together and in, in the, if any intellectual listen to our videos uh then you know whether they liked our delivery or not um you, they would find what we said interesting because we're not idiots right well let me uh get into another question for you do you think you're innocent or do you consider yourself innocent and do you consider somebody who is uh, worthy of entering the kingdom of heaven? And um, what is sin? If you could ask those, those three questions. Okay, well, I mean, what I'd like to do, I'd like you to pose one question uh, at a time um, so yeah, I, can, yeah. I can address that thoroughly. Now, the first question. So let's go with the innocent. Yeah, or do I consider, you consider yourself innocent? Something? No, I'm absolutely corrupt. Uh, I've been 60 years on this planet, and uh, if something falls in shit it's going to end up smelling like shit and that's just a fact and this is why in the bible it says we're all corrupt we're all corrupt there's, there's no such thing as a perfect human being uh, but there there is a perfect essence of what we are deep at our core and that is our god consciousness it's our christ consciousness it's our cosmic consciousness it's the the very essence of uh, life itself every single thing uh, in this globe is in actual fact pure um, and you know when i say oh i'm absolutely corrupt um, i'm coming back to the human perspective but you know uh, if you trash the human perspective because it's meaningless you know then everything is pure and when we take dmt then the dmt will tell you that everything is absolutely perfect because what dmt does it takes away your judgment it takes away your ego and there's only pure intellect there and you will assess the world with all the wars and and all the heinous things the human beings do and you'll say that that's perfect why because it's all within the realm of god 
and God has his answers to as to why it's perfect. But you intuitively know it's perfect. Why wouldn't it be perfect? It's, it's cosmic. You know, it, the cosmos created this stuff. And just because we don't like it, just because our operating system, the ego, doesn't like it, that doesn't change the fucking cosmos, you know? So ultimately, we're all pure. Everything is absolutely perfect as it should be. But we've got this uh, ego operating system, which gives us this funny uh, experience. Um, you know, and, and we, uh, some of us, um, I don't, um, because I know it's all Maya. But some people think, oh, we know this and we know that. You know, they're like the Neil deGrasse Tysons of the world. Uh, we know this and we know that. And, uh, you know, Mickey Al Kalku. Um, but we physicists, oh, you physicists, you know nothing. You, you silly. You're just silly. Uh, you, it's all hypothesis and you don't actually know anything. And so all your hypotheses change in time. And so why can't you just look back? You know, in Newton's day, everybody thought they had all the answers to the cosmos. And then lo and behold, you, quantum physics comes along and blows that all out of water. Look, there's always going to be something that's going to come along and blow everything out of the water. We don't know anything. We'll never know anything. We're not supposed to know anything uh, because if we knew actually what this was, we'd all know that we're God. And then we wouldn't see any rhyme or reason or purpose in it. And maybe we just think that like, we can do anything because we're God. And then the, 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 the game would change, you know, because we wouldn't be self-protecting this existence because we know, well, as soon as the game's over, you just come back alive in another skin, you know, in another variety of consciousness. That's all this is. It's like a computer game. And, you know, when you look at how computers work, well, this um, cosmos, uh, as, as, as far as quantum physicists uh, reckon, it's exactly the same as a computer game, which is in binary. So do you you don't consider yourself the body or are you the body? You are no. you are or you're not the body. Uh, 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 I'm God. I can say I'm God. Uh, I can say you are God. I can say uh, this table is God. Everything is God. There is no um, there's nothing that isn't God. Um, you see what I do is I come out 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 out, and this is what psychedelics um, do for you. Entheogens. Entheogen means to be with God in union with God. It these psychedelics are called entheogens for a very good reason because they take you into the mind of God. They take you into your mind, which is God, uh, and uh, you leave this tiny little minuscule ridiculous operating system of the human being, the ego. We just leave that. And then you enter into cosmic consciousness. And when you're in that, you know everything is perfect and beautiful and wonderful, and you're it. And then you come back and you go, oh, fuck. Uh, people call me. What, what, you know, people, the, people call me awake and brave or whatever, you know. The artist formerly known as awake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, if that, okay, so if, with that, uh, but that saying, then what is the meaning of the title of your book saying closer to God? Because this book is a, a book of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. so, but if you're saying everything is God and you're God, I'm God, what, what do we need to get closer to if we are God? Well, you, you know, um, we have language. Language uh, is very confusing. and um, Yeah, because that title could be very dogmatic in and of itself. It's like saying there's a God outside of you, so I have to get closer to God. A Christian can use that title for their book, too. So that's why I want to know what the meaning... What, what, what was the reason for that title uh, if you're saying that we are all God already and you say, well, no, God, you're God? Because, um, uh, because of how the cosmos is, uh, the cosmos is um, given to polarity. The cosmos is given to paradox. Uh, I am a direct reflection um, more than most uh, of the paradox of the polarities because I'm born under the constellation of Libra. Libra is the scale. And so, you know, we're tipping a little bit this way, tipping a little bit that way. And we, 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 we intuitively uh, are very familiar with the realms of, you know, um, all the, the diversity. Whereas if you are born under Taurus or something like that, then you've got... Do you love Aries people? Sorry? Do you love Aries people? Well, my daughter's Aries, and um, oh, nice, bro. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> she's, and, and, she must and, be a spectacular person. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, but you know, when we're born under these certain constellations, we have certain uh, characteristics um, uh, to our characters. 
Um, and so, you know, Librans, when you look at um, Librans, they are, are um, considered to be highly intelligent, um, very spiritual, and all these different sorts of qualities. And I'm going, well, I never said that. And so people don't like, you know, people when you, you, you recognize something and you just say, well, they have to deal with that. You know, I'm not protecting, I'm not to protect anybody. I could have called this book, I Am God and see how that fared up, you know. But basically, uh, that's what this book is saying. Uh, it, it's saying that I have discovered that I am God. Uh, if you don't want to consider that you're God, that's your prerogative because you're having a human experience and all of your godliness has been uh, hidden from you because this is a game here. Um, and the game is about trying to find if you can find it. Try it to find if you can realize your godliness because that's what it is. It's a brilliant, fantastic game. Um, when we wise up, when we become awakened, when we become enlightened, we realize that we are God. And it's a wonderful, beautiful, emancipating thing and um, so uh yeah but you see also the price of this book is I, i've put it up for um and the reason why it is the price what it is is because it it, it meets what i wanted to convey in america it's 26 dollars 66 cents in britain it's 26 pounds 66 pence uh, the kindle is six dollars 66 or six pounds 66 now there's quite a lot of difference between the dollar and the pound and um so uh people buying the english version um i get more royalties uh, to buy the american i don't get so much because um you know the dollar isn't very strong against the pound but it's important for me for anyone to be buying this book i'm speaking to them subliminally and they're going to be looking at this book and most people are going to be thinking oh that's my god it looks like it's the christian god or maybe you know the the, the islamic god because it's the clouds and it's the gateway to the cosmos where god lives look that's god's house there and we're walking through it um and so they'll be thinking oh yeah i want to get closer to god uh, but then when they come to buy it they look at it and they go oh fuck it's got the mark of the beast in the price and then they're going to be conflicted that they're exactly where i want them to be in the paradox because when they buy this book with the mark of the beast they enter into the essence of the beast so they are buying a book of god but god is part and parcel of the beast and so we're all part and parcel of uh, beast you see and so there's nothing fluffy bullshit uh, about this this cosmos unless you um pretend that there is but if you get down to the nitty-gritty it's yin and yang it's a little bit dark in the light a little bit of light in the dark and so that's why i've done that and that's why i'm promoting um the god and my experiences with jesus and jehovah which actually happened and i'm not denying that they happened what i'm saying is they're not what lots of people convey them to be and so uh, I want people to know from the get-go that this book is going to be exceedingly compromising for dogmatic religious people. And um, they need to be very, very careful that they don't get converted, um, you know, <laughs> at some portion through the book. <laughs> hey, so I, uh, I saw one video um, that you put up. I didn't get a chance to watch it, so I don't even know what you said in it. But um, you spoke about how DMT is God. Um, can you go a little bit into that? Because I noticed you pushed a lot of DMT in a few of your videos, a couple of my chats and whatnot. But what do you mean by DMT is God? Well, when we take DMT, uh, it obliterates the ego. And it takes you into a, another dimension. And the dimension it takes you into... Um, with closed eyes or open eyes, they're very, very different experiences. The 90% of the time I prefer open-eyed because the closed-eyed are completely indecipherable. They're incomprehensible. It's frustrating because you've got all this stuff happening. You don't know what's going on. And for my variety of personality, uh, I say to the DMT when this shit's happening, wait, 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 stop, stop, slow down, slow down. What, what was that? What was this? What was that? I'm actually interested in your beautiful stuff. Please let me have a look at it a bit closer. But no, it doesn't it's kind of like dmt goes you see how brilliant we are yeah you're fucking brilliant but i just want to be able to look at a little bit of your brilliance instead of going insane 
okay so i do the open eye version and i see the world uh, like avatar movie uh there there you, you you take this dmt and within a few seconds if you take it off all of a sudden poof you're in a different world it's the same world physically in that uh, if you are out in the field the rivers there the trees are there and everything but everything is alive everything is conscious everything is saying hello everything is welcome and beautiful and it's magical and you just you're just so in love you're so in love with it it just brings out love 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 dmt is love I and mean, Rick Strassman uh, called it the the the, the, um, the God molecule um, because it it, it is it, it just takes you into that God consciousness and there's everything in there there's all different sorts of creatures and not all beautiful and there's quite a lot which uh, deemed to be nefarious I've never seen any nefarious um, uh, entities but Rick Strassman when he, he did his experiment with intravenous um, uh, DMT uh, in clinical um, situations uh, 60 uh, he had 60 people all educated middle-aged uh, lots of them you know found themselves in an operating center being operated on by pterodactyls or crocodiles or you know being raped by a crocodile you know, there's this stuff that goes on, you know, in the astral, I've had women come and pull me out of my bed and actually rape me, um, you know, but, you know, I evidently was in compliance with it, otherwise they couldn't have done it. Um, and, and so there's all this stuff that happens. But when we look at it in the astral, when we're in dreams, we have to know that it's not real. Uh, and nobody's getting hurt. And so I think this place is exactly the same. When we go back to source, we will realize that this was only a very, very fleeting a dream, probably lasting something like three minutes, but we thought it was 90 years, you know. Uh, and that's why when you take DMT, it tells you that this is absolutely perfect. And that there's nothing uh, except love here. And so I know that that is God, because that fits absolutely with what any guru uh, or any religion has ever said about the glory of God, that's the glory of God. It can't be anything different other than the human essence, uh, Ziggy, because otherwise we'd never experience it. And if they're talking about something that we can't comprehend, how would we recognize it when we're there? And how has anybody wrote about how beautiful it is if they haven't experienced it? So therefore, we must be able to experience it here in this life. And we experience it in different states of consciousness. And that's it. You know, it's fucking, I want to say it's simple because it takes a long time to work out and you need to be pretty smart uh, to work it out, to be fair. Um, and, you know, the vast majority of people can't do it, evidently. Uh, but I've done it. Um, and, you know, if this book uh, gets um, its due respect, then it will actually uh, get up there in one of the world's bestsellers because it is in actual fact the world's first spiritual um, Bible because the, 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 there's... One man's very, very deep uh, and concise uh, description of his personal awakening from being uh, imprisoned in abject um, egoic mentalism uh, and self-destruction to uh, rising out of that into the glory of God. And so I've been in the glory of God without any drugs at all, through meditation or just spontaneously in dreams. Angels have come to me and they've given me a message. Or I've seen Jesus uh, in the, the, the shape of my father walking in a dream, giving me a message. I've had God speak to me. I've had Jesus speak to me. I've been to hell. I've been tempted by the devil. You know, when Jesus goes into the desert, you know, was tempted by the devil. You know, I know exactly what that metaphor is because I've been there. You know, without elaborating, in recent times, uh, I was there for two solid months in, in abject hell. Abject, abject hell. Where the beast were, 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 was right here. He was right here. Taunting, terrorizing, tempting. Even trying to, to take my soul. You know, the, the, the sole purpose of him being there was to steal my spirit if I wasn't strong enough. Lots of people aren't strong enough. And he's a winner in those sort of places, right? 
Um, but, you know, I had something within me uh, and it wasn't easy. It was very, very hard. But I won. I rose above it. And I know now what this shit's all about. And so that's what I'm saying. But you see... So do you, do you not think it's dogmatic to push this God DMT onto others the same way a Christian would push God onto others? We say push. What do you mean by push? Like pushing, like telling people that the key to enlightenment would be uh, taking DMT. I asked you one time and I uh, asked you what was the key to God consciousness and you said DMT. And then based on the title of the video that you had, you said DMT is God. And you said somewhere along the lines that the only way to experience God consciousness is to de uh, you know, destruct or destroy the ego, but it can only be done through DMT. So isn't it dogmatic to say that the DMT is God and that's the way to reach well, I don't know. Uh, I don't God consciousness? Know. I don't know whether I said the only way is to do it by DMT. And if I did, that, that video must have been several years ago because that's not my stance because I have been into the kingdom of God uh, without taking anything. And, um, you know, because I've had these experiences about being in the kingdom of God at least 10 years ago, uh, I, I, I must have said it then. And so um, I, 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 I want to put a question mark next to that, um, that it isn't the only way. And I'm not, you know, um, claiming that drugs is the route to God, you know, because that's why lots of people uh, will take it. Um, psychedelics, entheogens, in union with God. I never made that fucking word up. You know, uh, it's been around before I was even born. And so other people have been saying what I'm saying now. When we take antigen, we enter into the kingdom of God, the mind of God. And that's a fucking fact. Uh, as far as, you know, um, potentially millions of people have said uh, and experienced in the past. You can get into the kingdom of God by meditation. You can enter into the kingdom of God um, by some curious uh, level of consciousness. And I, I can't say their dreams. I'll speak about them in the book. That they're, 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 You are fast asleep. Your ego is fast asleep. But what happens is your consciousness, your awareness, wakes up crystal clear it's never been clearer ever 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 and you are in this realm which you know is god and you know you are it and so yeah. you know when you come back i, I see uh, i know a lot of dmt users and um they're they've taken dmt for certain years and yet they're still in a state where they're still questioned they're still uh you know they're, they're still kind of like trying to find themselves to some extent you get what i'm saying so it kind of has me thinking if this is a god molecule and a god particle to some extent um how do we know it's not a feel good at the moment i could say this for example let's say there's somebody who's fearful of talking to girls and then all of a sudden i start pushing alcohol and say hey man this 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 alcohol will help you loosen up and talk to girls and then all of a sudden they take it and they're like wow you know you're right i started to feel better i could talk to girls now suppose the girls were god you know what i'm saying and it was just because of the drug that they were able to do it now the reason i'm bringing this up is because i can say money money feels like a drug to some extent as well because you feel so much more powerful when you have full pockets right you feel more confident you feel like you want to treat people you feel like you're walking different you are talking different because you feel more confident because you have money in your pocket but then some people say money can't buy happiness let's say for example that person acquires the riches but then they get to a state where they're just like had hey, now what you know i thought money would buy me happiness but i'm still at a unhappy state it only just gave me that quick you know uh satisfaction in the moment um same thing like i just mentioned with the alcohol same thing with the dmt in my opinion when it comes down to finding that christ uh consciousness that even asking certain people what christ consciousness is it's like you get still religious definitions out of what christ consciousness uh basically is when i uh talked about for example um you know there's certain things that because you suppress yourself of it or to some extent you will actually you, you, your, your mind will find a way to get it so you talked about dreams right um i'm sure you've had wet dreams in your life there's been dreams where i've you know had the most amazing sex in the world and then all of a sudden i actually ended up reaching an orgasm in my dream and i wake up and i have fucking cum all over me right but did i really have sex no i didn't really have sex which leads me to the you know and it sucks that the first video didn't come up because we talked about this in the first video I never took DMT though, but yet in my dream, I'm walking my garden and I picked up a mushroom and I took it 
And I was fucking tripping balls, man. And I'm talking about to the point where it's an inexplicable feeling that I've never felt before, right? Where my legs first went spaghetti. My body started to fucking like, I'm talking about it was just some euphoric feeling. It was amazing, right? But the first thing I noticed that was so clear and lucid was the visuals. I started to get some crazy, beautiful visuals. Like everything just felt, but I, I didn't realize I was dreaming until I woke up, right? Until I woke up. But then I woke up and I'm like, wow, man. And the first thing that popped into mind was, is that I've had this in my mind so long that all of a sudden my mind took me to that experience without me physically using it. I'm about, to, I'm about to finish now. And then the sex part, I've always said that you can actually have sex with somebody without physically touching somebody, which is going to lead to the question about, you know, when we do things here in the physical, is it necessarily uh, the godly way to do it? Every time that we do something in the physical, is it the godly way or is it the inverted way of something that we're naturally able to do without using physical, but we're in creation because we decide to want to experience creation, right? So what do you think about that? Well, firstly, what I think about, um, you know, where you're coming from, um, you say, oh, yeah, well, that was only a dream. And then I woke up. This is a dream. You know, the Hindus have been saying this is Maya, you know, for thousands of years. This isn't real. So what we have to do, we have to, you know, get some level of acceptance. Uh, and if we can't get this acceptance, it's because we haven't had the experiences. Now, if we have had the experiences where we know, some, one of my viewers wrote to me um, uh, on, on the comments um, and, and said um, you know, something about, uh, you know, I thought this and I thought that. And then one day I, I took this and then it told me absolutely this is a dream. And I now I know it's a dream because when you have this information, you absolutely fucking know uh, there isn't a shadow of doubt. Every cell in your body knows it. And so that's the thing. You cannot contest this because there's nothing that you can be that sure of in this physical realm. You cannot say anything emphatically, um, fundamentally, uh, that something is absolutely positive. Because just like Rene Descartes did, you look for this positive shit about the mind and it all falls through your fingers. This is a fucking dream, Ziggy. And so we can't make any comparisons. and We can't say that, oh, just because you took drugs and you did chemicals and then you're seeing that look the drugs are chemical uh, or, or the drugs are dream the, the chemicals are dream it's all a dream everything's a dream and and you know you said that you never had sex in your dream you had sex in your mind you had sex in your mind you had sex exactly the same as you do in the physical reality because your physical body ejaculated exactly like it did in the fucking dream so you did have sex and then when you was dreaming, you you thought absolutely it was real. Of course, and your body knew it was real. That's why you ejaculated. And so uh, we, we have to be very careful how we dismiss things as not real. And, you know, in relation to DMT, DMT is in our bodies. The receptors are for it in our brain. We produce it in our brain, in the stomach, in lots of places in the body. DMT is our natural drug. And so if anyone goes, oh, he was on drugs when he saw God in the clouds, I've seen God in the fucking clouds just by dreaming, uh, breathing, sorry, just by breathing. Because when you breathe, you can create DMT then. You release DMT. And so it doesn't matter how you get there. Uh, I'm, t I'm telling you now, you know, all these people that go, oh, it's just about drugs and this and the other. Well, what about when people have these uh, spiritual experiences like I did, having Jesus speak with me and seeing Jesus facing the fucking mule behind me when I was on meditation? I wasn't on fucking uh, any drugs that I was smoking or injecting. I was on these drugs. I was on the fucking Christos uh, within my own mind. The DMT within my own mind. And that's what all of these bi biblical prophets and writers were experiencing. They were out in the wilderness. They, you know, they had so much time on their hands to just be chilled and contemplate. And they would just have spontaneous visions and out of bodies, you know, walking with the sheep because they've done it day in, day out, year after year. And the mind wants to, you know, have a, a little bit of, um, you know, an adventure. And so it doesn't matter how we get to any of these things. If our consciousness believes it's real, then it is. So let me ask you this. What is sin? 
What is sin? Well, you know, uh, in French, sin means without. And uh, lots of people, when speaking about sin, uh, they they will say that um, it, it means without. You don't have um, the Spirit of God, let's say, for instance. And so if you sin, then you don't have God. Yes, I am absolutely um, uh, an adherent to that. Um, if you consider that what you have done um, has a weight to it which calls on your conscience. If you do something which doesn't call on your conscience, as far as your consciousness is concerned, you haven't sinned and you won't carry the weight of it, i.e. a psychopath. That's why they can do so many uh, heinous things. Um, they can just write with a pen uh, some law or, 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 or some jurisdiction or something which is going to affect many people very very gravely for instance if they just um you know sign a contract um with some resources in an african country uh whereby the, the, they sign this contract for the gold for the next 99 years and every single ounce of that gold that comes out of that country the people of that country they never see a fucking penny of it that that is disgusting and that's vile because that is their their heritage that is their right being born on that ground and so whoever signed that Good God, you know, they're the devil themselves. Uh, when you, you look into um, the ramifications of what they do. And so we can do many things. And you see, you know, what I, I've, I've, there's so many things I've, I've talked about in this book. It really is, you know, mind boggling the, the, the amount of stuff. But I actually um, searched within myself through months and of course i've been doing it for years but intensely through months to see what my body was feeling when i did and said certain things uh what it was feeling when i read certain things against other certain things i know that i can reconfigure my mind from a godlike bliss into an egoic sort of uh, hell just by who i'm speaking to what i'm saying and what i'm reading uh and and so to get into the kingdom of God, then to be, to walk in the footsteps of like Jesus and you turn the other cheek and you don't judge. Uh, and I write a whole chapter about judgment and the power of judgment and non-judgment. I write about the power of prayer, I write about the power of confession, uh, I write about so many things. And, and so there is a space within human consciousness, uh, which is the kingdom of God. And there is a space within human consciousness which is hell. And that's why all these people, human beings, not God, has wrote about these things because they wrote about themselves. The Bible is human psychology, people. And so, you know, Christians, fucking get over yourselves. Hell is in the so, left brain. Heaven is in the right brain. Do you believe you were born in sin? No. So how are you corrupt? You said you were corrupt before when I asked you. You said you're because corrupt. Because I have a human operating system. So Reason you are not the... Know. But I asked you, you said you're not the human. You're not the man. You are God. Oh, well, I mean, look... Do you still feel negative emotions? Do you get angry? Um, very, very rarely. Very rarely. And um, years, years now, I haven't uh, got angry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I can bluster. You still, <laughs> you, still show, you, still, you still show your teeth at Christians, though? <laughs> yeah. So I asked this because, yeah, I asked this because I've noticed I felt like I've been, if we want to use the language closer to God, is when I've been able to uh, manage these emotions. It's not to say that um, they don't come up, they do come up. I'm just observing when they come up. And um, do you feel like whenever something comes up, you should address it right then and there at the moment? Or uh, is it better to just. Uh, take your time and observe things and just beat around the bush on certain situations. What do you think is the best way to handle situations? Never act spontaneously um, mm. unless you feel your life is in danger. Whenever you feel something uh, in your mind and in your body, observe it, focus in on it, contemplate it, uh, question it, seek out the root of it and endeavor to understand it. And then when you understand something, you, you look, for instance, um, we can walk into an office or a bar or something and then someone will be speaking and we won't like the way they're speaking. We think they're loud, obnoxious, rude. We don't like the tone of their voice. And all of a sudden we've made an opinion about them. 
what we have actually done is we have took ourselves voluntary or maybe involuntary in lots of people into uh, hell. We've took our minds into the left brain, the judging brain of hell, whereby now we feel maybe we want to hurt them or they may want to hurt us. Anything we think about, it isn't good. Uh -huh. You know, we, we're not feeling good. And then when we see our friends, uh, they go, oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, that fucking idiot over there. And all of a sudden, then you start infesting him. And, you know, it, 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 it's a road to hell. But if we go into um, a, a room and, and, and then we feel something like that we ask ourselves ah that's interesting why am i feeling like that why am i judging this person and then if you think about it feel it you go oh well maybe it reminds me a bit of myself um because what we discover is uh, you know particularly and i recognize this all through my childhood and school days when you go to a school uh, and you all of a sudden you're in a room with 30 or 40 other kids and then there's, there's some you instantly like and some you instantly dislike and it always it really turns out the ones you instantly dislike that they end up being your best mates because they was almost a carbon copy of you and so what, what, what was it that you didn't like? You felt threatened by your own characteristics, which you didn't recognize in somebody else. But by the time you were familiar with them and you recognize them and then you think, well, you're just like me, you are. And then you like each other. So we, we have to contemplate. We have to feel. We have to be still and we have to know the root of where everything's coming from. And of course, this is psychology and, um, you know, psychology be taught in all schools. It should be the most fundamental and basic of education. Uh, like um, Socrates said, to know thyself. Because if you know yourself, if you know how your brain and your emotions work, then you are master of your own de destiny. But they, the powers that be, don't want you to know that because they're going to use all the stuff you don't know about against you to control uh -huh. you, manipulate you. But if you know what buttons are being pressed, you go, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm not subscribing to that. It's simple, isn't it? You see the evil uh -huh. come over the world. Hey, let me ask you, um, do you like, uh, well, how do you feel about people debating? Do you um, think there's benefits to debates? Well, I mean, there, there is um, uh, and there isn't. If, for instance, and uh, again, I was just reading an excerpt in my book, and I'm saying, look, uh, if you get a philosopher uh, with a spiritual person, uh, they would have a fantastic conversation because neither one of them would be bigoted, neither one of them would be dogmatic and trying to lay down this is real and this is true and your God's fake and all that. And so you'd have a great conversation. But if you had a philosopher and a religious person, the conversation wouldn't go anywhere because it doesn't matter what the philosopher said, what questions were asked, the same dogmatic answers from the book uh, would be laid on the table that wouldn't make sense and they wouldn't lead anywhere. And, and you know, how many times have we seen um, these uh, conversations? Uh, they're not even conversations. They're just one party spilling off what they think and the other party spilling off what they think. For instance, Christians and Muslims. I mean, is any sense ever going to come out of a conversation? No. But if you get a philosopher and a Muslim, um, that it may be a little bit open minded. Uh, then maybe you're going to get a little bit of a sensible conversation. But the point is, these religions are based on uh, on on 100 dogma, and the, the dogma is immovable, and and so you cannot penetrate and have a decent conversation. So you know, uh, with with people like us, you can ask me anything. I can ask you anything. We we'll have a great conversation. Because we're not married to anything. We don't have any biases. We don't fucking own anything. And so we're just looking for, you know. Well, here's a, I feel like here's the big benefit. I mean, uh, the, the, I love debating. You know what I'm saying? But the whole thing about debates, I feel like you have to be in your masculine energy. And you have to have a really, really good grasp of your feminine energy for you to be able to debate someone. I feel like debating keeps your mind sharp. And it really doesn't matter what they talk about. I'll find a way to have a conversation with that individual. Um, but the whole thing is when you're in a beta male state, uh, you notice how they get emotional because they associate with the information yeah. so much that they tend to want to then attack your character. Yeah. And that's how, you know, it became personal because when this person is losing a debate, they tend to want to attack you, you know, and then that's when I say, okay, this is now uh, a level of disrespect. And when that happens, then of course I I'm going to whoop your ass. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is 
basically my big philosophy. I'm like, if you're going to engage with me in a way where you're going to attack my character, then obviously that's an act of, an, an, an act of war. Well, you're, 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 enga you're engaging in war now. Now you have to go to war. And the only way I'll stop is if you say I tap or I knock you out. One of the two. But, you know, there's evolved ways of doing it. It's, back then, we used to do spirit, uh, uh, physical fighting. Now it's, you know, it's Revenge of the Nerds, like 101. Now it's done through the means of the internet. So people decide to want to get brave and whatnot. But I look at intellect and debates normally and the information you have as a weapon where it's not even as far as how credible your information is is how creative you are with the words you're using of language and how you use your mind to basically debunk the other person and that's why when you become emotional you're not really a man you're just basically now attacking character because you're you're basically still uh, in your feminine energy you don't have a grasp of your masculine yeah. your mind is not working properly to basically engage in a proper intellectual debate the reason i like debating and i'm gonna finish now is first of all i mean that's the role of masculine energy i mean masculine energy back in the day we fought for wars we fought for countries if you have information and you have a stance on something uh, you stand up, you know what I'm saying? And you, and you be, like, look at Christians. Christians want to go in debate because they feel like they want to spread the word of God. And it's a masculine act. Look at people overall. When they want to spread something that's not, uh, let's say, active in society like veganism, do you notice how they can't do anything as far as take up arms and, you know, fight people physically to make yeah. them stop buying meat? They only have an option to do peaceful protest. If they do anything other than that, then they will get stopped, right? Why? Yeah. Because they're still, it's, it's like women. Women basically want to be equal to the man, but all they can do is protest, right? But I'm not using it as gender. I'm using it as energy. Because if you observe energy in the cosmos and how everything manages here, as far as nature goes, the sun has order over the chaotic uh, energy of the feminine nature of the mother earth, right? So it sheds light on this planet. It's basically the guiding force over the chaotic natures of feminine energy. It's the same thing. That's why it says as above, so below, as within, so without. And when you look at everything outside of you, everything is symbols. But when you're operating on both sides of chemistry, right? Because everything's chemistry here, like everything's energy, but there's two sides of energy, masculine and feminine. But when you know how to operate from both sides and you find that neutral ground, you're literally reading between the lines. You get what I'm saying? That's why people say truth is hidden in plain sight. It's just that people are so polarized that they're not really able to read between the lines because they're only looking at it from one perspective of things and not from the broad spectrum of things. So how are you really in Christ consciousness if you cannot observe the full spectrum of what the polarities are showing you? There's no such thing as this is me and this is not me. Because it's only there as not you because you're there observing both sides as black and white. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if it's evil, bad, feminine, masculine, black, white. It doesn't matter. You're observing both chemistries, which means that it's still coming from you. Except it's still, yeah, it's still the illusion. When we talk about being born in sin, being born in the dream, that's why I want to go into the topic of Adam and Eve and how we're even observing this through the eyes of actually God in actuality. And what is our role here as a man? to basically make an impact on the planet as far as purpose and meaning, which people say there's no purpose that, and no meaning and whatnot. Before we go to yeah, that, then, let's, let's, let's wrap that up. Um, you know, the, the emotion, if we get involved in emotion, is because we um, are defending something. And we have become defensive because we cannot rationalize and reason uh, our way out of it. So therefore, we become aggressive. We, we start attacking ad hominems. And, um, you know, we, we, we want to start speaking about your failures as a human being because you can't back up reasonably uh, what you have to say. Um, and it's your emotions. You get all angry because you know deep down inside that you can't back it up. I, I think... You but, know, if you're, but if you're still... If you're still I, mean, I mean, if you're defending something something doesn't i mean are you necessarily emotional i mean if you're debating you're still defending a position or presenting an argument you get what i'm saying so you're still in defense mode to some extent you could be on the offensive or defensive depending on what side the person takes kind of like if you're in an octagon with somebody you're a defending champion the challenger is basically the one trying to take that belt from that individual but it's because if you're emotional enough in a fight you're going to lose that's why you yeah. shouldn't even get emotional in I, the octagon I but you're, that, though, i don't really necessarily mean emotional if you're emotional, you're not going to think clearly. No, but you see, if if anybody wanted, and I would love to debate um, uh, educated Christians. Um, uh -huh. You know, we, we see Jordan Peterson sitting around the table with the best um, Jewish scholars on the planet. Uh, I would like audience with one of those, and I would tell them what I've. You subscribe to Jordan Peterson's philosophies, all of them. 
Um, no, the, the, look, he, 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 he puts vastly too much emphasis on biblical scripture as if it's real. Uh, and he's engaged in this fraternity whereby he, he, he's with uh, biblical scholars and they all speak as if it's absolutely true what Moses said and what Matthew said. When, you know, he's kind of, oh, goodness sake, children, children, grow up, do grow up. It's, it's just preposterous what you say, because you can see how they worm the way out of this and they worm the way out of that. And it's kind of like it, it's, it's sad and it's really pathetic. Uh, they, they don't actually have any feasible, um, solid uh, arguments. It, it's just a fantasy that they're projecting. And it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, some people like to live in a fantasy. I don't know what they're protecting. I don't know why they would want to do that, why it's so important that that Bible actually makes sense and it's logical and it's reasonable, even though it's written by a, a whole bunch of different people throughout 2,000 years. You know, why should it all make perfectly sense? But they, they insist that it does. And they insist that, that, you know, if you go back to Isaiah, Isaiah was, you know, prophesizing this 800 years later. Bollocks, 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 bollocks. But, um, Aaron, can you tell me why you don't agree with the? Because I want to go back to you said that if you're emotional, then you're defending or whatnot. Can you go back to that real quick? Why do yeah, you think that yeah, yeah. if you're emotional, is because you're defending because you're emotional? Yeah, uh, if you don't have um, firm ground uh, from where your debate uh, stems from, um, like um, Muslims and Christians. They don't have firm ground. Even with the absolute best scholars on the planet, it's rocky territory. And so unless... But how you do you know they're getting emotional, though? Oh, well, if, if um, you know, they, they, they start to, to get angry and then if they start the ad hominem, like you say, the personal attacks, then obviously what they're doing is they're bringing out their armour. They want to launch into this uh, silly tic-tac of humanisms because they're scared of the, the, the philosophical debate because they can't deal with that. And so that's why... So do you think when you debate, do you think you're coming from a space of thinking or knowing when you're debating? Well, hopefully I'm coming from um, a, a perspective of inquiring. Um, I, I speak about um, things that I consider uh, was real to me. And I think it, it, if we're going to be standing firm on any particular subject, the only subject we really should be standing firm on is your personal subjective knowledge, because it, it, anything else is open uh, to flaws because you don't know. You can't prove, um, you know, what Nietzsche was thinking. You know, this is why, you know, in the Bible, it said this and the Bible it said, oh, well, what um, Joshua meant was this and, and what Moses meant was that. Oh, really? You, you, you know the mind of this dude, did you? Even if he ever lived. No, no. I, I'm sorry. I can't accept that you know the mind of this other man so what we have to do is when we've got scripture 2000 years old we have to take it on face value only unless there is a lineage of something which really you know can indicate that there is following a trajectory but most of the time there is no uh, trajectory following it's just inferences and 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 desires to make it you know fit all oh, oh, this pit fits no it doesn't it doesn't actually fit you know from my perspective who is an open-minded philosopher that bit doesn't fit it fits from your perspective because you really want it to you see yeah. and that's the difference but you see well, when so, I, Aaron, where do you get your info from where do i get my info from um, everything you know everything you share where does it come from well i mean <laughs> again we enter into a very very deep philosophical um conversation you see my, my information comes from God, for example. Well, the, and the yeah. reason I ask you this is because if it comes from God, I don't need to get emotional because I'm coming from a space of knowing. Because yeah. if I'm thinking, then I'm coming out with philosophies of what I've heard from somebody else. And it's still not something that came from me. Yet, other, even though, here's the paradox. Even though those people are mirrors and versions of me, they're, they're not me though. And they are me at the same time. But when I come from the space of God, and one would ask, well, how do you know you're talking to God or who is God and what? Well, we, I could get into that, too. But my point is that there should never be emotions. I, actually, like I said before, when you're emotional, you're not thinking. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Th there's a level of artistic value into not thinking. There's a place and time for thinking, right? But when it comes down to what you're spewing out, 
and it's coming from thought, any, anybody could just say, I don't care what you think. Nobody really cares what you think. What's the truth? Then I ask you, Aaron, what is truth then? Yeah, what is truth? Well, you see, f first um, uh, question is like, um, you know, uh, where do you get your, your knowledge from? Um, I was about to say that um, I did a video a few days ago uh, and uh, it states that I didn't write this book. Uh, Aaron Berry, the ego, never wrote this book. Aaron Berry, the ego, mm. doesn't exist. There is no self. There is no me. It's just an idea because when we look for the self and the me, then we discover that you're just a conglomerate of ideas. You know, there is actually nothing in existence anywhere when you get into the platonic, um, you know, um, uh, rational thinking of ideas. It's all idealism. Everything's an idea. Nothing stands up to scrutiny because it all falls through our fingers at the end of the day. And so at the end of the day, you're right, it's God. Everything is God. And and so uh, why should... Well, I we think you did write, you did write the book, though. I, I don't, I don't think you didn't write, I think you did write the book. Yeah, but, but, like, in my opinion, you wrote it. Like, you're making a video with me right now. So that's like when, see, there's one thing that, that gets me too when I watch like these athletes and then they go and you did you did you wrote it but listen i've, I've watched athletes let's say boxers all praise to the most high i couldn't have done this with, without jesus christ my lord and savior and i'm like bitch you won the fight you beat the guy your team won you did it not god but then that's the whole thing i get where the, the idea and the concept behind the whole god thing but this is where i still feel we go into a religious mindset when we say i didn't write the book i give all praise to the most high no you wrote the book you just channeled God through your vessel that you're observing in reality through the instrument of, I mean, the, the body being the instrument of the mind that makes it real, right? But if you did write the book, it is true. If something else outside of you, considering God wrote it, then it's not true. Because honestly, that's why I asked you, what is truth? You wrote the book. You got to give yourself credit. You wrote the book. You're a fucking genius, Aaron. In my opinion, you wrote a fucking brilliant book, you know? Like, you shouldn't give credit to anything outside of you, but you, you wrote the book. Tap yourself in the fucking shoulder. Yeah, I mean... Right? I, but what is truth? I appreciate that, but um, it, it, what you see, when we get philosophical and, and ask ourselves, well, who am I? I know there isn't actually anything here, you know, other than um, an experience that uh, I, I consider that I've had. It's like you say, you know, do you believe in history? Um, and you, you say, well, there's no, no. And so therefore, do I believe in my history? No, because it's just an idea. And I'll tell you why there's nobody here. Because if you should speak to um, my friends or my family members, and you ask them, so, um, you know, I've been speaking to Aaron, and you have some great conversations. So who is Aaron? Well, you will get um, as many different versions of who they think I am from, um, you know, as many different people. Uh, one will say this, and one will say that, and they'll all say, this and we'll say that and you'll go is this the same person because there's no person all there is is a perception of things and so i am a perception i'm a perception of self i'm a perception of you and all the viewers watching everybody will have a different perception of me and you and they'll be going oh that bold guy i don't like him and they'll be going oh aaron all thinks he knows everything you know you can have something to say about it and we ask ourselves well is that really it you know or is it just a projection it's just a projection isn't it well, you wrote that book in a succession of nows. You never wrote that book in any other way other than a succession of nows. And now is the only thing that exists. So yeah. you a second ago doesn't exist, only you now. So there is a you right now, but there wasn't a you a second ago, and there's no you a second later unless it, it, I, the, the you now know. exists. Let me tell you how it went, though. You know, um, for many years, I knew that I was going to be writing a book. Um, and... I didn't actually know what the, the, the content was going to be, per se, um, until it just it just snowballed. And then, you know, I found myself thinking, well, I mean, I, I, I think it's now. Um, I'm being sort of like told it's now. Uh, I don't know. I've got, you know, of course, I've been speaking for 14 years. Am I going to write about that? What am I going to write about? Anyway, I thought, oh, look. You know, what writers say is they say, look, don't think about it too much, just start writing. And so I know that that works because I kept a dream journal for four years. And as soon as you put pen to paper about a dream that you couldn't remember hardly anything, all of a sudden you remember a whole bunch about it and you're writing for a whole hour and a half. And it's like, where does this stuff come from? Automatic writing is coming out of the unconscious. So who wrote this book? Oh, 
the unconscious Rolstein. wrote this book my unconscious wrote this book which is a collection of every single memory and idea and experience that you know this thing has had through throughout you know the duration it's been here and um when i put my fingers on on the um the, the, the keyboard then stuff started to flow and um I, i'm kind of like well i mean i don't know what's coming next but there's another line and another line and another line and then something and then all of a sudden i digress and i have to go over here then i come back and i'm like look this is too brilliant for me aaron berry i'm not that brilliant you know uh, something's happening here something's helping you and when i read that book i i look at it and it never for a second loses thread it, it, like my conversations i can digress here and i can have a tangent there i'm always coming back to the point and i'm always graphically uh, explaining uh, being explicit about what i want to convey and i'm very emphatic and uh, to ensure that i do that and so look you know if if some people could say yeah yeah you know you've just been humble Aaron, or whatever i don't know uh, anything to be fair and so um what i i do know is that lennon mccartney would say that they didn't know where their you know music was coming from uh back and beethoven and all the rest of it they just say woke up in the morning and it was there i could see it and i just copied it down there's something more than this silly human being going on it that that's what i'm saying and so i give hey, uh, let me ask you this do you do you think that uh anger and hate is something to discard or is it something useful and can uh one reach a certain level of heights through that emotion yeah oh for sure you know you can reach the dizziest of heights through hate because um uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know many and people, anger many a country was conquered in hate uh, look at all the religious wars look at all the stuff that was done buildings torn down cities burnt and everything um that was just all in the name of hate uh, and so yeah it is very very powerful um it's just the 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 art opposite of love and so if we have love and we want to build and create which is the right brain then look how powerful we are but you know we're like sheep on this is why the wheel of shiva is is outside of cern because uh is the god of uh, creation and destruction you know it's all in one it, it's everything it's the cycle of life uh, and uh, so it all comes together and you know uh, as human beings, we uh, have um, a choice, most of us, we have some sort of a choice um, as to, you know, where we want to place our energy. In the book, again, I speak about free will, do we have it? For the better part, I don't consider that we have free will. Do you consider that you have free will? Or do you consider that mostly you just being moved along, uh, premised on the things you did yesterday and last week and, you know, all these sort of things? For instance, now, you've got that car, you've got that house, you've got your cats, you've got your missus, um, and you've got your kid. And it's kind of like, um, well, you know, that's your rock, that's your substance. So everything you do is going to be a step, uh, you know, in continuation to that. So if you really had free will, you, you know, you just like you could just up and go to some, you know, other country and completely forget about that life. But could you ever? Forget I feel like I feel like a, a deep rooted uh, way to to get into that state of free will is basically uh, a lot of that has to do with willpower, too. Because it's 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 basically uh, observing mindset. Uh, that's why I asked you the other video. Where do you create from? Uh, do you create from the mind or the subconscious mind? Yeah, I think um, it, it all comes from the uh, the subconscious. It all comes from the, the deep root of uh, the collective unconscious, um, and then the the conscious mind gets fed. Because look, when we uh, look at like Michelangelo, you know, chipping out his um, statue, and people ask, you know, how do you know how to do that? And he goes, it's already in there. Um, so you, so your your subconscious mind can't can't create or think. Your subconscious mind is only receiving uh information from the conscious mind the conscious mind is the th is the creative mind so for example that's where i come i i actually uh look at it and say one is feminine one is masculine so you have the conscious mind you have the obviously the gardener but if i'm planting an idea or a seed into the subconscious mind it's like me planting a specific uh plant that i want to bear fruit from later in the soil again i also implant my seed into my female i can get her pregnant and have a child as well but the subconscious mind is basically 
the it's like a recorder. You're just basically receiving info. But the key to the conscious mind, again, being an alpha male state, is being aware. That's what people say. Oh, I'm woke and I'm conscious. But people aren't woke and conscious. You know how much information they listen to and they take it as real or they're not really actually reading between the lines of what they're actually intaking. It gets into their subconscious mind and it becomes a new corrupt programming. This is where I consider mind viruses, right? This is why it's actually wise to be able to... Uh, Again, being God consciousness, where you're actually able to utilize that masculine conscious mind to know what goes in and what comes out, sort of like a gatekeeper. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I asked you about that, the two sides of chemistry. I'm looking at everything as chemistry and as symbols, because if you really look at it, your subconscious mind is seeing everything in symbols. Your conscious mind is basically looking at everything and intellectualizing it, receiving it and making it as some form of tangible information to pass and utilize and program it into the subconscious mind. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Well, you see, um, you know, the early days of um, uh, psychology uh, with Freud and Jung and, um, you know, those sort of people, the Freudian, uh, uh, Austrian camp, um, you know, Freud uh, coined the unconscious and, um, you know, Many people jumped on that bandwagon and, um, you know, Freud, uh, Freud through his analysis, um, hypnosis, everything like that, deemed that um, uh, the unconscious was uh, just a memory um, of information. And it was like a child. You could program it like a child and it wouldn't do any thinking. It just received the stuff. And so once you've implanted all this information, then that would feed back the conscious mind, whatever was fed into it. And so this is why we get into repetitive loops or, you know, various ways of thinking, because um, what we feed, we become, you see. And so if somebody has been fed religious dogma uh, for, for 10 years of their life, then their unconscious is filled with religious dogma. And so that is the only thing that's coming back out of it from that Freudian perspective but when we go into the Jungian perspective Jung speaks about the collective unconscious and what he's saying is he said look it's not like what Freud said um, you know Freud was we, 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 saying that it's kind of like only an individual thing but um, Jung knew that it wasn't an individual thing it was a human thing it was an etheric thing it's something that's passed on uh, through millennia for every single human being because we know that we um, uh, tap into the collective unconscious consciousness um, and we retrieve archetypes so when we're dreaming uh, we will dream archetypally yeah and so uh, we can never have experienced you know these archetypes in our life and we couldn't think you know why we would dream about those things but they make manifest in our dreams because we tap into the unconscious and so when all of these genius people have created some stuff uh, I've never heard a single one of them said that they've created it from their conscious mind and uh, Michelangelo never created anything from his conscious mind. Um, Einstein never created anything from his conscious mind. Um, you know, he said that, you know, it's 98 percent inspiration, 2 percent perspiration. So 2 percent, you know, a little bit of thinking, but 98 of it percent came from somewhere else. So there's a pool of collective unconsciousness, which is vast. Then we enter into the Akashic records, which makes sense. Then we enter into morphic resonance, the morphogenetic fields. That makes sense. And so we look at this and, and we know that there's Wi-Fi all around. Well, the Hindus knew that, that there was the etheric Akashic records two, three, five thousand years ago. They knew that that stuff was there, you see. And so we have to be really, really careful of what we repeat in modern times, if we want to know what's going on with this body and this experience, we have to go back as far as we possibly can uh, into the deepest archives of human uh, information. And that's what I endeavor to do uh, with every subject that I um, engage with. And then I come back from that. And what we do when we do that, we have the, the full spectrum as much as it is possible um, to, to uh, lay before us to make our assessment. And this is why if you ever ask me a question, I'm going to be saying, well, where do you want me to come from? Do you want me to come from the ether or do you want me to come from the ego? You know, because they're, they're vastly different.
Yeah, I totally agree with you because that's why back in the day, these people used to put balls in their hand and allowed it to fall. And they kept waking up, falling asleep, waking up, falling asleep. But they always asked themselves a question before they went to bed or before they fell asleep. And in that cusp is where they were able to get it because of the pool. Like you just said, the collective unconscious is the pool. So you're grabbing ideas, right, from a pool, right? Yeah. But here's the thing, though. In this realm, is the same exact thing, right? You're having thoughts. Are they your thoughts? They're not your thoughts. So... In other words, how do you overcome thinking and are you able to generate a thought that's never been thought of before in this realm? Mm, well, again, uh, very, very difficult to say because I've never listened to an intellectual which could say that they would know without any, uh, with any conviction where their thoughts came from. You see, well, we can have a PhD in this and we can be versed in math and this, that and the other. And, um, you know, a mus musician can, you know, know all the notes and everything like that. And then they can write a, a beautiful, um, you know, piece of music. And uh, then if somebody uh, asked them, well, where did they come from? Uh, it's kind of like, well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I was walking in the woods with my dog and then all of a sudden something came into my mind. And it was kind of like, duh, 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 duh. and I thought, well, is that a tune that I, I'd heard before? It's kind of like McCartney with yesterday. He woke up one morning with the theme of yesterday. And for weeks he went around, you know, all of his friends and, and asking, well, have you heard this tune? And they went, no. And so then he started to put, you know, some words to it, scrambled egg, la, 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 scrambled with it and turned into yesterday um he he can't attribute um his conscious mind uh to that it came via the unconscious but his conscious mind toyed and struggled with the lyrics you know um you know and maybe the structure of, of um the, the the song to make it fit into what we expect to be a sellable you know two minute song or something like that um, and, and so, you know, there's, there's so many things that come into play with, with all this thing. You know, we, we um, exist in a, an enigma wrapped in a riddle inside the mystery. It's, it's indecipherable. Uh, it's genius. And, you know, all, all we can do is just like, um, you know, try to enjoy um, being human because we've been given these tools and, and this limited uh, way of thinking and we can only do what we uh, have been given you know to do we can't do anything outside of that we can't um, create anything that isn't destined to be created by us um, you know we'll only run so fast we'll, we'll only climb so high we'll, we'll only you know do so many things within the parameters of what we are and yeah. so the human being has certain parameters and anything is possible within those parameters within the capability of the the, the human body mind and consciousness and and so uh -huh. when it gets a little bit sticky and it gets really exciting is when we look into imagination because imagination is key imagination is everything because everything is born after imagination and so when Jehovah apparently says in the beginning, you know, there was the word and there was this and that, and let there be this and let there be that. Well, that's what we do on, on a day to day. We say, let there be this and let there be that. And we have a vision of something uh, and then we create it. And so the things that we have, uh, you know, a vision of is like anti-gravity vehicles, flying cars and super technological buildings and that. Uh, because we have already created them in our mind, we've, we've drawn them, we've made films about them, everything about our fantasy works. Uh, all we've got to do now is to bring them into this so-called reality. But this isn't a reality. This is only a fantasy. And so we've just got to fantasize them into being more solidly, solidly, solidly fanti fantastical. Uh, fantastical. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It, it, it's kind of like we, we, we see these flying cars. Uh, well, we've just we've just got to, you know, have a little bit more imagination how to do that. That's what it's all about. I mean, it, it doesn't have anything to do with, with the, the nuts and bolts of the atoms and, and, you know, the molecules, this that, and the other. It's all fantasy. We create everything. It's all mind. And, you know, so how do you how, how do you overcome thought? How do you overcome thought? Well, I mean, you know, deep meditation, you can overcome, overcome thought. Mm -hmm. Is that the only way? Um, well, I mean, by being unconscious, um, 
there's, there, there's no real evidence for people having thoughts when they're unconscious. So this is the phenomenon you see, and this is what lots of scientists, um, you know, investigating. Um, do we actually continue to think when um, our everyday consciousness uh, becomes unconscious? Uh, but what I'll say is that the everyday consciousness, the cerebral cortex, that goes offline um, as far as uh, it is perceived, but the unconscious can never go offline because the unconscious uh, is the essence of the cosmos. It's God. Yeah. What do you think about that? I've, I've, I've overcame thought being pissed the fuck off, bro. I've been fucking angry, so angry that I've overcame thought that way too, bro. But this is where I've had to, uh, you know, grab a hold of the emotion and either become impulsive or sit back and not jump to conclusions. But I've noticed in angry states, I've overcame thought. But that's where... I've asked you before if it's a tool or if it's something because you can use s hatred as a tool. I mean, I can hate my situation so much and change it, you know, based on being put in a hot seat. I've been in relationships with females in my time where, uh, you know, I've been so pissed off. And then all of a sudden I write her a letter and like my fucking shit just comes out in a much flowy state. Everything I just want to come out just comes out in such a flow state. And it's just basically not even thinking. I'm just basically managing and I'm just actions of like what's happening in that energy. You get what I'm saying? Uh, you you can that? act out the energy by thought, right? Is there anything really happening when you're doing it by thought? Or is, any, or is it just an idea the same way as if you were acting out something physically? You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Have you heard of the, the, the book uh, Conversation with God? No. Um, but it sounds interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I forget the, the, Before the, you jump on there, you want to take a break because it's getting very long. Yeah. And then yeah, I feel okay. like we're not so, going to be able to so save we'll, it, bro. We'll, we'll end this. Uh, I'm, save I'm, that I'm, thought right there. Yeah, hold on to that okay, thought because i got to use the bathroom right. anyway, bro. And uh, we'll say five minutes? Yeah, five minutes, bro. Sounds good. This way we don't uh, we don't lose. I mean, we, we, we don't get too long on the yeah, video. Then more, it, it has a problem. An hour and 40. So, um, yeah, so just hit pause. I hit pause on mine already. Um, you see, when you hit pause, um, the, it's, it's, it's only pause the recording. When you or just hang it up, hang it up, yeah, and just hit me another link. link in five minutes, yeah, so yeah but make sure my stream, my run, I already recorded, but make sure my audio is good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you in a bit.